Welcome back to yet another video. Now, the original plan for today's video was I was going to show you the kayak I bought. Uh, the problem is I did not buy one yesterday. The person that I drove three hours to meet never texted me, nothing. So I drove three hours for nothing, which really irritates me, but that's not the point. So instead today, I'm going to show you how I rig up for brim and what setup I use. Uh, the lures, well not the lures, but the bobbers, the weights, the hooks, everything like that. So I hope you all enjoy and I hope this is helpful to some of you out there. To get started with your combo, you're going to need a rod and a reel. Now for me, starting off with brim, just get a cheap basic rod and reel setup. Just make sure it has light or ultralight description. That way it has a pretty sensitive and soft tip where you can feel the bite. This one from Bass Pro Shop is a Micro Light Plus. It was like $20. Great little setup for brim. I've had no problems with it. And the line is four pound test. Two pound test, it has a very small diameter. It's very hard for fish to see. However, it could break if you have a bigger brim on and will definitely break if you get a bass. Six pound braid, I've had problems with bird's nests, even on spinning reels. So four pound mono is my best line of choice. You may not get the bass in, but any brim really, as long as it's not like a massive hybrid, you'll be able to catch with this. And four pound test is also very easy to cast and it's very cheap. This is what I have a four pound test like Omniflex. Two dollars for a spool 700 yards. That's about 80 to 90 yards on it now. I usually don't spool for two years so that line should last me about 14 years in all. So you get your value for money at this point. Now I want to show you the uh, bobber, the weight, and the hook as well as how to tie them on. So you really have two main choices for bobbers. You have this round one and you have this more of a cylinder shaped one. Now the round ones I usually get have a weight on the bottom that way they will always be upright whenever you do casting instead of sideways. These just with the little weight on your line are usually upright so I've had no problems there. Now here's the thing, I prefer these over these for a particular reason and that is fish don't fill these on top of the surface as much as your rounded ones. The rounded ones, they're not too bad on top of the surface. However, when a fish comes up and gets it and pushes it down, there's more of an area for that foam to go to, so the fish can definitely feel this bobber go under the water. Well, so this one, since of its shape, it goes under the water a lot smoother, so the fish doesn't feel it nearly as much. And in my experience, I've had a lot more bites and a lot more fish on the hook with this type of bobber. As well as this bobber is a lot easier to put on as uh, considered this one in my opinion. You have two sides, you simply take these little knobs out, take your fishing line, there's usually a cutout space or there should be, put it in, put it on one side, make sure it lines toward the back, put it on this side and your bobber's in. You can also slide it around a little bit more versus this one. You have to reset it by taking the line off so you make sure not to snap it or fray it. Another good thing is the price point. These are about $1.20 a pack of three. These are $0.99 cents a pack of three. It's not much of a difference, but I'm trying to help you save as much money as possible because brim fishing can be incredibly cheap if you set it up right. Now that you have your bobber on, you usually want to have about one or two feet of fishing line to use. Now I can't tell you what depth to set your bobber, that really depends on where you're fishing. However, brim and crappie eat up towards the surface instead of down, so it's better to have it set at a foot rather than three feet in say a five foot water column. That way you, they can still feed up and you can decide where the best spot is uh, depending on depth. But bobber's on, you got about two feet of fishing line. Instead of putting the weight on, we're going to put the hook on. Now as far as hooks go, you just want to use this tiny little uh, wire hook. It's very sharp at the point. And this is an eagle claw. Again, I picked like 50 of these up for about $3. And I got to type the size 6. Size 8 is a little too big. Size, well actually it's a little too small. The size 4 is a little too big. So I get a size 6 because it really works for all brim. Now for crappie bites on it may bend it out, but for brim fishing this should be a good size. And then once I have the hook I usually tie a palomar knot, however you can really use any knot you prefer.
And then once you have your knot tied, you just cut off the tag end with a pair of scissors. And I usually like to cut it pretty close to the base, that way I don't have a lot of tag end on mine. So now that your hook's on, it's set a little high for me, so with this a bobber you can simply move it up a little bit. That's about the depth I would prefer. Now you need a weight. All you really need is a small BB weight. Nothing big, nothing grand. Just small BB weights are perfect. You can get a hundred of these for a dollar fifty, something like that. And you don't want to set it too high. That's the mistake a lot of people make. You actually want to set it closer to your hook. It's only about two or three inches above. You want to take your little BB weight, add it to your line. Close down on it, and there you have it. This way the bait drops as low into the water as you really want it to, and this little BB weight's not going to bother brim at all, or I've had no experience where it has. And that is your setup. You just have a small size 6 hook, a little BB weight, and a very simple bobber. I know I gave a lot of extraneous information, but the reason I did so was so that everybody could understand why I use this setup. I've tried different things through trial and error. This is going to help you save money so you don't buy as much equipment as I did trying to fi find out what the best setup was, and that really is it. It's what I've caught the most fish on, it's been the most efficient, and it's really the cheapest setup out of all the ones I use. So simplicity is better in this case. Anyway, I really do hope you enjoyed this video or that it helps you out. If it did, please share, like, subscribe. That would really help me. And if you have any questions, leave it in the comments below. I'll be more than happy to answer. As well as, if you want me to get in touch with you quicker, add me on social media, which is also in the description. And thanks for watching.